So let's talk about sample space. Sample space is your list or your set of all possible outcomes that we have. And probably the most popular way we go to sample space is by flipping a coin. So if we looked at any coin, the sample space to that is going to be heads or tails. I'm not going to flip a coin and get something other than those. Another popular one we have is if we roll a dice. Now, you roll a six-sided die, you're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six as your sample space. You have six different possible outcomes. Now, maybe it's not a six-sided die. Maybe you have an eight-sided die that you're looking at. Well, it's going to work the same way, but now it's going to go up to eight. If we had a 12-sided dice, your sample space is going to be all the possible values that cover all the possible outcomes. If we talked about the periods to have math class. If you're one of my students, the sample space that you could have for a period to have math class would be first, second, fourth, sixth, seventh. Now that's just if you're my student in my class. Okay, now that's different than all the periods you could have math class if you're just an any student at the school. If you're any student at the school, you could have first, second, third, fourth, sixth, seventh, and in fact, some of you select few could also have a zero period. So that is the sample space for it. Be careful when you're looking at it, whether it's those dice or whether it's a periods of class kind of problem, to make sure you're paying attention to this, the uh, parameters that it's given to you. Uh, we could also think letter grade. The sample space for the letter grade you could get in my class, well I would hope it would just be an A, maybe a B, but in reality you could get A, B, C, D, or F. So when you walk into class, if you finish the class for the year, you should be getting one of those outcomes, an A, B, C, D, or hopefully not an F. Now, sometimes we like to combine these and make multiple uh, occurrences out of this. So let's say we were flipping coins. And what we could do here is start to look at a tree diagram to do that. So if I had two coins flipping and I wanted to see all of the possible outcomes. So if I flip the coin on the first event, I'm either going to get heads or tails. That's going to occur. Then I look at the second flip. Now when I get that second flip, I've already had that first heads or that first tails. So from those, I still have either option to go. So I have the branches from it. Maybe I flipped, I got a heads first, I got a heads again. I could have gotten heads first, then tails, tails, then heads, tails, then tails. But this now lets us to see what all of our possible options are. We could have heads, 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 tails, tails, heads, or tails, tails. And we can actually see that we have four different possibilities in our sample space, which are actually the number of branches we have on the far right. Now, maybe we want to combine things. What if I wanted to go a six-sided dice and a coin? So if I flip that dice the first time, I have six different possibilities I could get. Then from each of those, now I flip the coin. Regardless of which one I got first, the next one can either be heads or tails. Now, I had six options. I had two options. So this actually results in having 12 different outcomes. Now, how do we write that as a sample space? Well, we have one heads, one tails, two heads, two tails, three heads, three tails, four heads, four tails, five heads, five tails, six heads, six tails. And that is our sample space of all of the possible outcomes. If I was to do this, this experiment over and over again, I'm, it's going to be and fit to one of those. Now let's think of uh, outside of just our dice and our coins. Let's say you're going to get some pizza. And the pizza, you have two options. You could get a thick crust or a thin crust. 
you could get, maybe their special is you get one meat with that. So you're either going to get pepperoni, sausage, or chicken. And then you get one uh, vegetable with it. And you could have peppers, mushrooms, olives, and we'll say pineapple, even though it's not a vegetable, we'll put it in that category. So you want to look at all of the different options that you have. And we're going to use that tree diagram to help us. So the first choice we're going to make, the first thing they're probably going to ask you is, oh, you want a pizza? Do you want thick or thin crust? So we say, oh, we want thick or we want thin. Now, you have to pay attention. I, mean, I can't get both of these, so I have to make sure they are separate. But from that, I would then have three different choices from the meat category. I could have pepperoni sausage, chicken, pepperoni, sausage, chicken. So really, if I only had those two options to choose from, I could see that I have six outcomes. And maybe you're seeing it's the number of options in that first one times the number in the second one. So then I keep going on. Now I'm going to pick the vegetable. So how many would I have from each one of these? I should have now four different branches. from that. So I have two, three, and four different outcomes. So I actually have 24 different options. Now I'm not going to write all of those values out, but we could kind of see we could have a thick crust with pepperoni and peppers. And that would be a different outcome than a thin crust with pepperoni and peppers or a thin crust with chicken and pineapple. We have all those different options and you would have to write them as your set or your sample space.